wow, I did not prep for this video. You are going to get what you're going to get. But hey, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. My name is Cece and I have a brush problem. I have a paintbrush problem. I have a watercolor paintbrush problem. A few minutes ago, I was looking for a brush, a specific brush, and I could not find it. And you're going to say, but Cece, didn't you just reorg your studio? Yes, I did. And yes, I went through all my brushes. But I think at the time that I went through the brushes, I was kind of rushing through it. I just basically batched them up, put them in jars, and just plopped them there. So, I have reorganized them. I just did a very quick exercise and I filmed it for you because I think the way I'm, I've organized them is uh, going to make sense to a few of you as well. So, here it is. Up until now, I've been using only three jars and I just reuse mason jars or even jars that come from different products. This is a jam jar. <laughs> And so I'm trying to make sense of this. I think what I'm going to do is group them in types. No, I don't have enough brushes. Don't even try to go there. And these are just my watercolor brushes. I mean, I do have some, you know, unusual things like this straw, which I used to blow on watercolor and or alcohol inks. And I also have this lot, which I'm going to group together because these are just tools. I use them fairly regularly. So I think I'm going to bring in my knitting needle because I use this to mix watercolors. Sometimes the binding agent or the binder is has separated, so I just use that. I do want to keep my flats together. I have quite a nice selection now that I have received those ones from Princeton. And you can tell this one has never been used because it still has that sizing around it. So there's a lot of experimenting I need to do in the next few weeks. Uh, this one's not even a watercolor brush, so I think I'm going to not include it. Oh, here's another one. Here's another flat one. And I might combine some categories, but for now I'm just going to separate them. So these are the flat ones, and then I'm going to move into the uh, round ones, which are the ones that I have the most. Alright, so these are all my rounds. Uh, above zero. So now I've got my little brushes that are tiny tiny for details. I have this one here. See they're all like three on zero, ten on zero, that sort of thing. That's a twenty on zero. Then I have shader brushes. Okay so I do think that my shader brushes are going to be batched up with these ones. I don't have very many, but this is what I use for doing watercolor carving. These script brushes, I think I'm going to keep them with the smaller ones because I don't use them often. I don't want to include them with my rounds because I feel that they're quite different. For instance, I'm going to give you a comparison. This one here is the script. It's the same brand. They're both a silver black velvet. Okay, but one, this one is a script, this one is round, that's a number one and a number two. But you can see how the bristles differ. Uh, the bristles here are quite shorter than this one here. This is a script. So it's a different approach. I need to experiment more with these. And then I'm going to grab the quills. Oops! So for the quills, I have this one. And I do believe this one. Then I have the triangle brushes, which are awesome. The ferrule is triangular shape, and I do have a video on this. I will link up in the iCard up there so that you can see how that works. This is a dagger brush. Um, it's quite fun to play with. I love that. This is not even a watercolor brush. This is just to do a little bit of dry brushing. So I think I'm going to put that in with the tools because to me that's what it is. It's a tool as well as this one. This is a uh, it's a watercolor mop brush, but I use it dry. So in my eyes, these are tools. This one might be fun to play around with, though. Even not as a tool, but as a, a paintbrush because. I don't know, it could be fun. I have two of these. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna keep these with the special brushes. That's a mop brush. This is an oval. This is an oval. What is this called? Uh, oval wash, yeah. Okay, 
and then another oval one. And I think I'm going to batch them up with the quills and these two. Another batch to find. And I do believe I might put the triangulars with these ones. Because to me, the triangle brushes, it's more about detailing. You know, you can do like precise flower petals, precise flowers. So these to me are all about detailing. I'm gonna put these ones in here. My round ones are gonna go here. I got two jars left. These big ones are gonna go in a bigger container. These are the flat ones, and I need to decide what I wanna do with these. These are two round, they're not round. These are uh, my Hua, sorry, Hua Hong. Uh, brushes. They're great for detailing size one and size two, but they're so tiny compared to my other size two brushes And I use them for detailing so they're gonna go with the detail brushes. Okay, so these are kind of like specialty brushes So I'm gonna put them in here And one thing I'm trying to avoid is to have my brushes all stuck in a pile and I, you can't get any out So that's why I decided to separate them in a more cohesive way. Now this is a flat, unfortunately it's it's quite tall, but it's gonna have to go with the flats. I think we're good. Here's what they look like. All right, so we have the flat brushes are all in here, so they're gonna go in the middle here. Then I have the specialty brushes. So in there I have my Chinese looking brushes. I don't have a name for them, I'm sorry. Uh, the quills as well as the ovals and the daggers and the mops. Then I have the tools. I'm gonna put these ones here to the front because these are the ones that I use the most often which are the um, round brushes. And these are the brushes for detailing. I usually include my jar of gold ink and the white ink that I use. So there it is. Woohoo! It feels great. There's nothing I hate more than looking for things. Um, that's why organizing is so important to me and because I do watercolor a lot. Uh, these are my main tools and I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say wow you do have a lot of brushes. Yes, I do. You don't need this amount of brushes and I will be doing a video on what I consider a good starting kit for someone who uh, wants to buy essential brushes to begin with. But keep in mind that I have had a lot of these for free. I have companies that send me stuff. I'm also affiliated with thebrushguys.com. They have given me a, quite a few brushes as a courtesy and I will be linking their store in the description below because they have amazing prices. And I also have received quite a bit from benefactors like friends and uh, Patreon supporters. So, oh, look at them all, they're so cute. And also just because I haven't showed you anything artsy fartsy recently, I just wanna show you what I have been working on when I was on my semi vacation. Uh, for those that don't know, I've had the visit of two of my Patreon supporters. These are the two things that I did while we were arting all together. This one is not my best, but I still love it for what it brought me. I got lost in the details. This is all gold painting, by the way. I'm not sure if it's finished or not, but I just decided to move on. There are some bits and pieces that I like about this. Like for instance, this kind of like diagonal thing I like, and I've kind of tried to mimic it because the way I was looking at it at the end was like, maybe this is a reflection of what's going on up here, but eh. uh, I do like the, you know, like kind of like, hold on, I'm gonna try and frame it. I kind of like it this way, it's kind of cool. You know, there are little bits and pieces that I like. I also like what's going on here. So anyways, this was just a fun thing to do. And you know, you're talking and you're, you know, we've had some deep conversations and I wasn't completely paying attention to what I was doing, but it was just still great to be able to art with two other like-minded people. Now this next piece I'm gonna show you, I am super proud of it and it, 
it's an intuitive painting for sure. I posted it on my Instagram, but I love this piece. I titled this Be Present, Be You, and that is another fantastic quote from my friends at Beyond Limited. And I feel that I'm finally honing in on my style. You know, a style is not static the way I see it, but this is where I'm most comfortable, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Totally intuitive, did not plan anything. This person had a different uh, perspective when I saw it because I had no plans for this. I just wet my page a little bit and then I started dropping color and this forest appeared and that silhouette appeared as well but originally the silhouette the way I was seeing it was facing me and now it is facing towards the light and I love the symbolism. It was also a he and it turned into a she. <laughs> yeah I really really like this piece so I just thought I would interject a little bit of content in this video because again it is still about organizing and I, probably some of you are a little tired of that and this journal because I do get a lot of questions this is an 8x8 handmade journal it's by Handbook Co so handmade watercolor book and you can find it on Amazon they have other sizes but I know this particular book is available on Amazon and here is the name of the company actually I guess this is the company and that's a brand name so it's Global Art Materials Inc and it's 100% post-consumer waste. It's cotton and it's made in India. And it's super lumpy bumpy and I love it. And that was a gift from my friend Kathy. <laughs> I'm always happy when I see things that are organized, but not just organized because they look good organized like this, but they are actually, the, the organization makes sense. Right? It's functional. So that's my main purpose. It's not that they look great because I have a few jars where I have short and tall brushes and although my first instinct is to say, oh, ugly, it has to be functional first. So I'm very happy with this. I hope that some of you have found tips to organize your brushes. As I mentioned earlier, also I will be putting together a starter kit, uh, what I consider essential brushes that you should be having in your toolkit when you start watercolor painting, especially if you're on a tight budget. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any suggestions on organizing your paint brushes or anything else, just leave them in the comments below and I will see you later. Bye. Oh, oh, he just fell. Huh, hello! <laughs>